Hello YouTube, it's Russ Sandlin, uh, Dell Rugby, PM, the uh, Golden Rule, whatever you want to call me. Um, today I want to talk about uh, bank runs. <laughs> um, as an expat, uh, part of my mission and goal is to help all of you to be more financially secure, and if you're an expat like I am, to be secure offshore with your money. Um, so today's topic will be about how to diversify your bank assets. Um, anywhere in the, around the world you can have bank runs. I'll give you a little bit of a heads up. In 2008, I worked for a bank that had the first bank run in the GCC, the Co Cooperative Council. It was in Kuwait and there were people lined up around the block to get money in 2008 from the bank. The bank was going to go out of business until the central bank and the government of Kuwait came in and stepped in and gave an infusion of capital. So I've been on the receiving end of a bank run. <laughs> so it's not a wonderful life, I'll say that. Um, it, was, it was a challenge. So with that said, the United States has uh, some robust laws. And um, why am I talking about it? Well, in case you don't know, three major banks went insolvent this week. Uh, the last one last night was Signature Bank. Two nights ago, Silicon Valley Bank, which is the second largest bank to go insolvent ever in the United States. People were lined up in Manhattan to get their money out, and the police were called. <laughs> so it, it's a big problem. And then uh, the one that started it all off was Silvergate, which um, was the, the um, financial in, uh, bank of choice for all the Bitcoin-type companies, all the, um, all the cyber um, um, uh, cryptocurrency-type type startups uh, in Silicon Valley. So, you might say, so what? Doesn't the FDIC cover it? Yeah and no. Uh, for uh, people like me who don't have a lot of money, yeah, I'd probably be okay because the FDIC, as it stands now, covers up to $250,000 per account. But if you're a high roller and you've got a couple million dollars, you're going to get $250,000 back. Now, from what I understand from researching, Silicon Valley is going to be propped up. The FDIC is going to issue some kind of notes or something to guarantee that money. Uh, they did not do that with um, Silvergate, and I'm not sure if they're going to do it with Signature Bank. I'll give you more on that. But, but what does this mean? Well, if you're one of those people who has over $250,000, good for you. <laughs> But if you do, you need to di diversify. And, and in my opinion, you should have money in a couple different locations, jurisdictions, countries, and in a few different banks because you can have a whole jurisdiction shut down like you had with the Greek and the Cyprus bail-ins where they took the money out of people's accounts because the government and the banks were all broke. So that can happen. And you might say in the United States, oh, that'll never happen. Well, it could. So, so again, I was part of a bank run in Kuwait. Never thought it was going to happen. Fortunately, the government came in and propped up the bank. And it looks like the U.S. for right now is doing it. But the question is, how many banks can you prop up for how long before you can't? I mean, you can do it till you can't. So there are banks in the Middle East that are shaky. There's banks all over the world. China's had a lot of bank runs. Um, over the last couple of years. Um, Lebanon has what I call zombie banks, banks that are pretty much out of business and you, they're, they're worthless. The money in there is worthless. The, the Lebanese lira is, is, is um, no longer of value, just like in Venezuela. The banks are, are non-existent. Um, the, the, the currency is, is like Zimbabwe type inflation type currency that you can burn it for firewood because it's not worth anything. So, so the Middle East in general, though, is pretty good. Um, as many of you know, I, I have a lot of bank accounts here. I have five right now, actually. I have five bank accounts, four of them savings only, and one is a savings and a um, salary account where I get my salary from the contracts I work here, and then I send it back to the U.S. Um, so, so what I do, and not saying that you should do what I do, but what I do is I diversify, and I don't have a whole lot of money, as many of you know, um, but um, I have a little bit of gold and silver. Um, 
Uh, not as much as I'd like, but I have some gold and silver bullion, and um, I have a lot of old currency. Um, uh, that means silver from before 1964, which is 90% silver, quarters, dimes, and halves. Um, I hold a little bit of cash. Um, one of the, the favorite currencies that I, I try to hold a little bit on is the Swiss franc. A couple, a few, three, four, five thousand with Swiss franc um, is easy to hold because a Swiss franc goes up to a thousand francs. It's worth almost the same as dollars and they have a bill that's a thousand francs. So it's pretty easy to put that in your shoe or whatever you want to do with it. Um, so like I say, a little bit of cash, a little bit of uh, silver and gold. And then um, if you have money for real estate, you should probably have cash on hand to buy real estate as um, some deals pop up because I'm seeing in a lot of places, the real estate markets are, are on the precip getting ready to, to crash because of the higher interest rates. Um, the, the, the Fed is pushing up to try to abate the, um, the high inflation that we're going through. So diversify. Now, what do I do? Well, again, I don't have a lot and I have modest savings, but I have a savings account in Ali Bank here. Ali Bank is it's Arabic for friend for family bank. Um, I put in about a quarter of my savings in that. Um, and I have a chance to win um, approximately $250,000 um, every three months in a drawing. So it's like a lottery. And there's only about a half million people in the whole country who have any savings accounts. So, so I figure I have a lottery ticket there for one and a half million, which isn't too bad. My second bank that I have a uh, savings account is QIB, that's Qatar Islamic Bank. Again, um, every three months they offer a drawing of about $250,000 US and then they have smaller ones every week and every month. The third bank I have is um, Doha Bank. Again, um, I hope to, to win the lottery with that one. And then finally, the last bank that I have is this company, this bank called Dukan Bank. Um, the owners of that bank, um, Barwa Group, they're also the people that hold my passport. They're my sponsor for my uh, consulting activities in Qatar. So hopefully if I win the lottery with them, they won't take it from me. <laughs> um, and then um, again, I still have Qatar National Bank, which is propped up by the government. I have most of my liquid money there, my more of my money. I, get, I have a credit card there and I send money back to the US and I try to save there because I think it's the most solvent, but they don't have any drawings. And then I have um, some US bank accounts. Um, why? Well, I hope to get to over $250,000 in savings. That's why I'm working my tail end off. Um, if I do, I'll just evenly disperse it so I never get to that mark in any one bank. So my uh, bank that I do a lot of my banking with is Velocity Credit Union in Austin, Texas. They're okay, they used to be better. They're better if you're in person, I think, um, but they've lost their touch. The second bank I have is uh, in, in Maine, Camden Savings Bank. They're pretty friendly. Um, just started up with them. Third bank I have is Dover Federal Credit Union. I've been with them since 1977. And they closed my account because of do going dormant in 2015 and didn't tell me. So I just reopened, but um, they're not the same as they used to be. They used to be the best service and now Eh, yeah, yeah. And then um, I had Navy Federal Credit Union. As many of you know, I was a Navy reservist for some time. And uh, they're okay. Um, they're not as great as everyone says they are. I'm not in the credit cycle trying to get or build credit right now. Um, maybe in a year or two, I will be, and they'll be my go-to. They're known for having the best credit card offerings and the highest credit rates and lowest interest rates. So I'll probably do that with my wife when I'm back in the US. Right now, I'm just putting savings in there. And then finally, my fifth bank that I have is USAA, which I've been banking with, uh, again, since 1980. Um, uh, so Navy Federal Credit Union and USAA cater to vets. But if you have a parent or a spouse or, I don't know, those are the big ones. If you have a family member that's in the military or former military, you can open accounts with them and they're both really good. So Navy Federal, again, is really good from the credit side. They give the best like auto, boat, motorcycle loans and the best credit card offerings.
Now, I'm not taking advantage of those yet, but they're known for that. And USAA, um, best auto insurance you'll ever find. Really good auto insurance. Um, and they have some pretty good savings and checking accounts and okay credit card offerings. Um, so that's it. Basically, look out, be careful, diversify, understand that your bank could go under with the blink of an eye. Three major ones just went under in the United States last week and could be more. The FDIC only insures a quarter million dollars. So if you have over a quarter million dollars in any bank, you are in jeopardy in the United States. And if you have money that you're saving outside of the United States, again, use the same methodology I just described. I've got five banks in Qatar and I've got five banks in, um, in the United States. I mean, I don't know if, if, if five is too many or too little, but, but five was the number that worked out for me. Um, so always try to have um, at least, I would say, at least three or four bank accounts. A lot of it depends on how much money you have. If obviously, you have a lot of money, then you'll have to divide it out so you never go over $250,000 in any one place. And again, you should have some cash and you should have gold and silver. So I'll try to bring you more updates. Um, and I'm going to be doing some blogs with a friend of mine who's a financial consultant out of um, Knoxville, Tennessee. Good friend of mine. And uh, we'll leave it at that. So um, we'll talk um, next time and, uh, and, uh, and, and look for you later. Bye.